So I have been using Golang almost throughout my career. I learned it in 2016 and since then I have wrote countless number of services, production grade services in Golang, right? And I'm a huge Go fan. I love the nitty gritties. I love how its GC is optimized. I love the kind of flexibility Go routines give us. I love the concurrency control it provides. Given all of that, Rust is the new thing in town. Everyone's talking about Rust. Everyone seems to be learning Rust. So now I ask myself, if I were to learn a new programming language, how would I learn, right? So some of the things I followed when I learned my earlier languages like Python and Go, but obviously with experience, some things have changed. Now, these are the things that I would follow today if I'm starting to learn a new programming language, say Rust, right? So we'll use Rust as an example for me to explain how would I learn a new programming language. These points would definitely help you when you start learning a new language, right? So first thing first, you need to pick a programming language, right? So let's say I'm assuming here that you already have in mind a programming language to learn, be it Python, be it JavaScript, be it Golang, be it Rust, be it C++, be it C, be it anything. Now the first thing first, learning a new programming language is always an overwhelming thing because you have been used to using a particular language. Now suddenly a new language, new syntax, new keywords, new so many things, new features and whatnot come your way. And it's very natural to be overwhelmed, right? Now your entire goal over here should be to minimize how much of like how overwhelmed you want to be. So which is where what I would have done is or what I would do is I would split my goal of learning a programming language into clear goals. For example, project one, project two, project three. For example, one covers how to write HTTP APIs, one covers how to write CLI apps, one to write, let's say a system application, depending on what you would want to try out, right? So setting clear goals helps you in tackling a new overwhelmed situation in a very structured fashion. When you are chasing a particular goal, you are not trying to learn just a syntax. But what you are doing is, let's say you want to build a to-do application, a to-do CLI application in Rust. So if I were to start that, I would just look at what it takes for me to build a to-do application, nothing more, nothing less. This would help me get started. It's simple enough application and it would help me get started with the language. It would help me understand the basic nuances of it, basic keywords, how to structure the code, very basic, but at least it would help me become more comfortable with the programming language. Right? Now, these, this is the first goal. You might go to the next level and say, hey, now let me write an HTTP web server in that. And hey, let's say me doing some kind of system optimization with that, be it any goal, right? But chase the goal. Instead of you opening a book and saying, oh my God, there are so many things to learn. Oh my God, how do I start? It's always better to have achievable goals. This way, you would always have something to showcase. It's not that you are just learning the syntax. You are actually solving a problem, be it to do application, be it anything, right? So that's first thing, I would set clear goals. Second is I would try to find resources. Now, obviously without that you wouldn't start, but I am not recommending you to start with the official documentation of any programming language because it is typically not meant for beginners. So which is where pick your favorite book, pick a book that is recommended by most people, pick a YouTube series, given that you are going zero to one in a particular language, YouTube tutorials are a great way to learn because the YouTuber, whoever you are following would, would actually take you step by step into learning that language. And obviously because it's video, you would always have a hands-on thing. You would see that thing in action. It would help you uh, grasp that language faster than most cases. Right? So find resources, one YouTube channel, at least that you would want to follow end to end, no matter if it's a big YouTuber or a small YouTuber, it's the best tutorial out there or not, it does not matter because you are going zero to one, whatever comes your way, good. Okay. So official documentation might be, might not be books. Okay. But start at least start with YouTube videos. If you can grab your, if you can grab a book or two good enough. Official documentation, I would not recommend. If I am learning Rust today, I would not start with the official documentation. I would pick a YouTuber who has taught Rust and I'll start with that at least for my first application or first two application per se, right? Now, third thing is about coding. <laughs> like a lot of people like to learn stuff just by reading, which is not really a good idea, especially when you are doing a programming language. 
right so which is where you need to code code and code record things break things see error exception segmentation fault panics this and that but keep coding into like keep coding things in that particular language whichever you are learning this way it's really important because you cannot just have a lot of theoretical knowledge about something as practical as a programming language because at the end you have to write code so keep grinding keep coding no matter what so i if I were to start learning Rust today, I would be coding almost every single day, three to four examples from any tutorial, any book, whatever I could find, I would just start coding things. But one thing to note, I would not pick something that I don't know about. For example, let's say I don't know what palindrome is or I don't know how to compute palindrome is. Why would I spend time learning the logic in that? I would spend time doing what I know best. Let's say I know uh, how to reverse a string. I'll let. So I would rewrite that particular code instead of trying to solve a new problem and learn a new concept along the way, I would focus more on learning the language rather than anything else. And now with three projects done with having a bit of grasp in the language, you are very well set to be an okay programmer in that particular language. Right? Now what next? Right? A lot of people just continue this loop all over again. I'll keep working. I'll keep building projects and this and that that doesn't help why because you would you're not pushing your limits at a certain point in time you would know okay this is how you need to write code the more code you write the better you become but you are just becoming more fluent in the language but you are not up leveling yourself how to go there the idea is really simple after a certain stage when you're comfortable with the programming language you would want to learn say rust you should go and read a lot of code Reading a lot of code is really important. For example, pick your favorite open source project in that specific language and just skim the code. You don't need to understand. All you're trying to do is just skim the code and just try to get a glance. Hey, how did this work? Hey, how, like, what, what kind of pattern is this? Because you would see something repeating in the code and you would learn how to write good code. You would learn how to, for that specific language, how do you name variable? For example, let me give a very practical example for this. In case of Java, writing long names is very common. Go on the other hand makes you write or rather uh, recommends you to write very short variable names like A, B, C is acceptable in Go, but in Java you write index and this factory, impl, something, 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 right? So depending on the language that you are learning, there are some nuances of those languages. By reading a lot of open source code, you would understand it. That, hey, how these guys are structuring this code? Hey, how these folks are naming their variables? Hey, how these folks are splitting the code into different modules? And that's really important because that is what will take you to the next level. While doing this, do not forget to code a few things here and there, but spend more time reading than doing because now you are very well versed with the programming language. Right? And one pro tip, follow good GitHub projects, star them and Follow nice people on GitHub and just keep checking your GitHub feed. So on GitHub.com, when you're logged in and you go to GitHub.com, you see your feed that contains some really awesome updates if you follow the right people, right? See what's happening in the world. See what's happening in code, like when the repositories that you start and you would find some really interesting nuances happening, the new pull requests, new commits, just go through them, right? And have a time of your life learning a new programming language. And this is how I would learn a new programming language if I were to start all over again. And by the way, I'm actually planning to learn Rust in a couple of weeks. So these points is what I would be following to learn Rust in 2023. So yeah, that is it. A short video explaining how to learn a new programming language. I hope it helps you, helps you become a better engineer, learn a new programming language and start creating impact. Chalo. That's it for this one. Thank you for watching. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a ton. Thank you.